Hello, and welcome to the Lockport Buffalo and Jamestown Parent Orientation Webinar. I'm Janet DiPetrillo, and I'm the Camp Manager for the Girl Scouts of Western New York. This webinar is going to take parents and guardians through explaining the benefits of day and overnight camp and how to prepare you, the parent, for sending your daughter to camp. The objectives we're going to be talking about in this webinar is we're going to show you what our day and overnight camp programs look like. Again, we're going to share and prepare parents and guardians uh, and their daughters for a positive camp experience. We're going to show you how easy it is to register for an amazing summer experience. And we're going to describe this, the importance of the camp confirmation packet. All of you should have received our 2013 summer camp catalog either in the mail or you've been able to download it as a PDF from our Girl Scout website. If you have not currently received a catalog and would like one, please contact our office and ask to have one mailed to you. So let's take a look at some general information about Girl Scout Summer Camp. All of our camp programs follow our mission of building girls of courage, confidence, and character who make the world a better place. Along with our mission is our goals, and our goals support our mission. At camp, we will encourage independence and emotional growth of all campers. We will nurture and develop the self-confidence and self-esteem of all campers, and we will nurture and develop personal accomplishments and personal responsibilities of all campers. You can see the full list of our camp goals, again, in the camp confirmation packet. So who can attend a Girl Scout summer camp? Well, at our day camp facilities, girls entering kindergarten in the fall of 2013 through 8th grade are eligible to participate at any one of our day camp programs. While our overnight programs will serve girls entering 1st grade in the fall up through 12th grade. The great thing about Girl Scout camp is girls do not have to be currently participating in Girl Scouts in order to go. Girls do register to become a Girl Scout when they register for Girl Scout summer camp. So if we look at where our camps are located, we have three day camps, Camp Windy Meadows in Cambria and or Lockport, New York, Camp Seven Hills Lakeside in Holland, New York, and Camp Piperwood in Parrington, New York, which is just outside of Rochester. We have two overnight facilities, Camp Seven Hills Goodyear in Holland, New York, and Camp Timbercrest in Randolph, New York. We'll be concentrating on day camps Windy Meadows and Seven Hills Lakeside, and explaining the resident camp programs of Seven Hills Goodyear and Timbercrest. So if we look at our camp programming, all of our camps base their programming on the Girl Scout leadership experience, which focuses on the three keys of leadership of discover, connect, and take action. It is all process of girl-led, learning by doing, and cooperative learning. At camp, everything is girl-led. Girls choose what they want to do every day. The counselors are there to help guide and explain the type of programs that are available, but the girls ultimately choose the type of program that they want to participate in. Learning by doing is uh, through hands-on activities where girls experience different uh, programs uh, by actually participating hands-on uh, through what they're doing. And cooperative learning is team building and with, through problem solving. It's Your Story, Tell It journey is aligned with the state and national curriculum standards, and it's the journey that we'll be focusing on this summer at camp. So if we take a look at what's available at our Girl Scout day camps, again, our three day camps are Windy Meadows in Cambria, Seven Hills Lakeside in Holland, and Camp Piperwood in Parrington. All three of our day camps are going to run Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., with an overnight program and parent program on Thursday night. Before and after care is available starting at 8 a.m. in the morning going to 5.30 p.m. and we also offer busing at all three of our day camps in selected areas. The great thing about busing is we do have bus aids available to monitor supervision and to make sure that the girls are being picked up by the appropriate people and uh, are getting off at the right stops. Our bus aides are also unit counselors that work throughout the summer. So parents have an option. They can drop them off, either taking advantage of before care, after care, dropping them off right around 9 o'clock, or taking 
the bus. So Camp Windy Meadows will start July 8th to August 2nd and it's under the direction of Karen Tower while Camp Seven Hills Lakeside is under the direction of Carrie Drabick. They too will be operating at the same time as Windy Meadows July 8th to August 2nd. So if we take a look at what some of the programs that you'll see at Windy Meadows you'll see that we concentrate on a little bit of everything. Archery will be available for the first time this year along with brand new is our Gaga Pit which is the picture you see to your right hand side. It's a watered down version of dodgeball. Um, brand new uh, to Windy Meadows this year. Uh, we've introduced it to uh, some of the uh, camp programs last year uh, at our resident camp facilities and a uh, very popular activity and we're excited to be offering it this year to Windy Meadows. Tie-dye is also another popular activity that takes place uh, weekly. Parents will be uh, receiving information on Mondays from the camp director letting you know when uh, tie-dye will be taking place and uh, for your daughter to bring an item to tie-dye. Crafts are always a popular activity as you can see from the bottom picture on the left hand corner followed by outdoor cooking. Girls participate in some form of out outdoor cooking each week. Uh, we usually do that on Thursdays. Uh, we also have a uh, water program. You see the picture in the top right hand corner, a slip and slide or our, our water bonsai, uh, very popular, uh, especially uh, during those hot uh, and muggy days. And of course, the ever popular s'mores. So we couple that with our outdoor cooking uh, program or we tie it in with uh, snacks as well. So those are just some of the uh, various programs that you will see tied in again with some of the themes that are taking place. Okay. So what will you see at Seven Hills Lakeside? Very similar to Windy Meadows. Archery uh, will be available for the first time this year. Outdoor cooking, tie-dyeing. But we also offer swimming and boating uh, at Lakeside. Boating happens every day. You'll see the picture in the left-hand corner of your screen. Uh, that takes place every day uh, at Lakeside. Swimming takes place uh, once a week over on our resident side at Goodyear uh, where they do have a pool facility. So girls will have an opportunity to visit our resident camp facility, take a look at what resident camp is all about and experience some of the activities, also have an opportunity uh, for swimming. So what type of programs do you see at our day camps? Well, each week focuses on a different theme. For example, International Exploration, which focuses on uh, this, this year, My Passport to the World, where girls will have an opportunity to learn about the different cultures that take place throughout our world through customs and dance and foods, um, songs. And then they'll have an opportunity to share that information through the different scrapbooks that they create. Theater Arts will also be available through the theme Lights, Camera, Action. Creative Crafts is also going to be taking place through Crazy uh, for Crafts. So those are some of the themes that you'll be seeing at our day camp. The general camp program that takes place, we talked a little bit about it. You saw some of the pictures, archery, tie-dyeing, outdoor cooking. Um, we also have a parent program uh, that takes place, which we'll be talking about uh, in just a few minutes. There's an optional overnight new this year entering first grade in the fall for girls. It used to be fourth grade and we've uh, changed that now to entering first grade uh, and up. And the cost is $6.50 and that covers the overnight program uh, and uh, breakfast the next day. Lunch is provided on Friday for everybody and snack is available uh, every day. So here's a sample daily schedule for camp. Uh, again, before care starts at 8 o'clock, followed by a flag ceremony at 9, and parents are more than welcome to join if they so choose. Uh, we start the morning activities off at 9.30. So 9.30, about quarter to 12, girls are participating in all different types of activities. Uh, again, uh, from the pictures you saw earlier, it could be archery, it could be tie-dyeing, they could be hiking, they could be planning for uh, their cookout program. They could be doing a uh, craft. So anything uh, that has to pertain to the theme uh, they'll be focusing on, uh, 
again, in, in different types of activities. Lunch will take place in the afternoon, followed by uh, afternoon uh, activities again. Snack, again, is every day. And we do a closing ceremony about 10 to 4. Again, parents are more than welcome to join in. And our bus departs at 4, uh, ending with uh, aftercare at 5.30. Now, at day camp, our units travel together. So at any given time, you'll see anywhere between 2 to 3 counselors in a unit. And girls travel together as a unit. The only time that you might see a girl with a buddy is if they are running uh, to the facilities or running to get um, uh, an activity uh, for uh, the, the unit counselor. But uh, for the most part, the girls do travel together as a unit. So I mentioned a little bit about the parent program. That takes place on Thursday evenings from 7 to 8. It's a great opportunity for parents to come out, see the facility, see what the girls have been working on all week. The girls really look forward to showing off uh, to their parents and sharing what they've learned. Uh, for those that are doing bus transportation, remember that we aren't running buses Thursday night uh, because of the parent program. Usually from 7 to 7.30, parents have an opportunity to visit the units and tour the camp. And from 7.30 to 8 is our actual program where girls will put on uh, skits or songs or some type of show depending on what the theme of the week is. Okay. So if you are staying for the overnight, how to prepare for the overnight, you'll see a small packing list in the confirmation packet. Again, you want to make sure you have a warm sleeping bag uh, with pillow, flashlight, uh, sleepwear, toiletries for the morning, okay, and the pictures that you see at the bottom of your screen here, so you see Windy Meadows tent unit, that is where the overnight will be taking place, and for Seven Hills Lakeside, this is a typical tent unit, and this is where the girls will be sleeping. Again, this is a wonderful stepping stone to prepare girls for the overnight program experience out at Seven Hills Goodyear and or Timbercrest. It's important to remember that the girls will be sleeping in the cabins that you see pictured here, four to five to a cabin, where the counselors have their separate cabin. So again, it's a great way to start preparing them for the overnight experience. So what to pack for day camp? Now please keep in mind, this is a limited list. You'll find the full uh, packing list in your confirmation packet. There'll be some type of water activity going on at least every day. So you want to make sure your daughter has a bathing suit, towel, and water shoes. A jacket or a sweatshirt. And always be prepared uh, for the weather. So raincoat of, of some sort. Bug repellent sunscreen. Uh, we ask that you please don't have uh, any aerosol cans. You definitely want a sturdy water bottle because we definitely encourage hydration throughout the day. Some type of mess kit. Um, or plastic dishes, uh, plate, fork, cup, utensils uh, for th our um, cookout program that takes place on Thursday. And lunch um, is not optional. It is, you need to bring a bag lunch uh, with the exception of Friday, uh, which is optional if you don't want to uh, take advantage of the fact that we provide lunch on Friday. Your daughter can pack a lunch on Friday if she so chooses. And we, again, we please ask, please label everything. Uh, we want to try to avoid as much lost and found as we can. What not to pack? Uh, again, we really uh, do not want candy, gum, snacks of any kind. It draws unwanted critters into the unit. Body sprays and perfumes, they attract bugs, which, again, when it's hot and humid, you try to avoid that at all costs. Please no iPods, MP3 players, cell phones, or digital cameras of any kind or any type of expensive item. Please don't bring that those things to camp. I can guarantee your daughter is going to be coming to camp. She will get sweaty, dirty. Uh, she will go home exhausted, tired, and with a lot of fun. Um, so please do not bring anything of value. And always permanent markers. Uh, we ask that you please do not pack your daughter's medication in her bag if she's taking medication at day camp. That has to be turned into the nurse, which we'll be talking about later on in the webinar. Okay, so that covers briefly our day camp program. And so now we're going to head into our resident camp programs. 
So as I said earlier, we have two overnight facilities, Camp Seven Hills Goodyear in Holland and Camp Timbercrest in Randolph. Now for some of you who are saying, well, I thought there was a Seven Hills Lakeside in Holland. There is. Seven Hills is com comprised of two parts of the property. On one side is Goodyear, which is our overnight facility, and on the other side is Lakeside, which is our day camp facility. Both of our resident camps run Sunday starting at 1 o'clock in the afternoon and will end Friday night at 7.30. Bus transportation is available at Timbercrest and like day camp we do have bus aids that are available to monitor the safety of your girls. So Camp Seven Hills will be starting their season June 30th and will end August 9th and it's under the direction of Carolyn Magner. While Timbercrest will be operating the same time at Seven Hills, June 30th, and will end August 9th, and it's under the direction of Mariah Kramer. So what are some of the things that we're going to see at Resident Camp? Well, similar to Day Camp, tie-dyeing is a very popular program, and this too takes place at Resident Camp. So when girls are packing to come to camp, it's important that they pack things that they'll be able to tie-dye. Some bring uh, pajamas, some bring pillowcases, towels, socks, uh, t-shirts. Um, I've seen somebody bring items, um, curtains for their bedroom that they wanted to tie-dye. So if it's something that can be tie-dyed, the girls definitely bring it. Archery, again, very popular, uh, offered at both resident facilities. Outdoor cooking, as you see the bottom screen, uh, picture on your screen, again, that takes place throughout the week, be it snack, breakfast, lunch, dinner, there's some type of outdoor cooking that is taking place. You'll see the picture of the blown up trampoline. Uh, Timbercrest has a beautiful 32 plus acre lake where the trampoline is there for the girls to enjoy as well as swimming, sailing, kayaking, rowboating, canoeing where we have a pool facility at uh, Goodyear. So you see the bottom picture there, uh, our pool facility. We also offer boating um, at uh, Goodyear. Uh, we have a small little pond where we do boating, uh, kayaking, and paddle boating. Horseback riding is the top picture of your screen, uh, is available at both facilities. At Timbercrest, we do western riding, which is more concentration on the trails, where Seven Hills uh, will be doing the English riding, which is more concentration on um, the way you position yourself uh, in the saddle and more uh, uh, intricate details in the ring. The picture to your left is a ropes of a ropes course uh, element. We have a full ropes course program at um, Goodyear, Seven Hills Goodyear, uh, starting out with team building, uh, leading up to uh, high uh, program elements anywhere to 35 40 feet in the air extremely popular program Timbercrest has what we call portable elements where they concentrate a little bit they dabble a little bit in the uh, uh, low uh, course elements or team building aspect of it so if we look at some of the programs that we offer for our younger girls and this is uh, uh, grades 1 to 3, 1 to 4. We have a Horse Lovers Club both at Seven Hills and Timbercrest. This is an introduction to the horse program. Great way to get girls familiar with their horses. Uh, they'll come and they'll take a tour of the barn, get a, a horseback ride, and start getting themselves familiarized um, in what the full horseback program is like for older girls. Paws and Claws is uh, taking place at Seven Hills. Um, this teaches girls about uh, the proper care of animals, both domestic and wild. Uh, this is followed by a day trip to the Buffalo Zoo. We have Grossology at both of our resident facilities. This is where girls really get involved in slime. And so they create their own slime and goo and they really get dirty in the mud. And a little bit of uh, science and STEM is built into that. Again, ropes course programs. And we also offer, if the one week program is just too much for girls, particularly our younger ones, we have half week programs starting Sunday and ending Wednesday night. 
So if we take a look what's available for our older girls at resident camp, we have a tent, trail, canoe, and kayak program at both facilities. This is an introductory uh, program to our, our wilderness trips or off-council trips. They'll do some tent pinching, backpacking, um, and they'll do some itinerary meal planning, and it helps get them prepared for the out-of-camp trips. Sailor's Paradise is all about um, sailing and uh, boating, uh, a concentration in uh, kayaking. So this takes place out at Timbercrest on their, as I said, their, their beautiful lake facility. New this year, duct tape art for those who want to look, do, dabble in the uh, arts. And again, horseback riding. Pastry Chefs is a, a culinary experience where girls have an opportunity to work with our cooks um, and they learn the basics of baking. We also offer some specialty trip programs. So we've got the Extreme Adventure Program taking place at Seven Hills. It's a two-week program. The first week is uh, at Seven Hills Ropes Course Program. The second week, they'll take a trip down to the Adirondack uh, Park to the Extreme Tree Adventure Course. That is a course where there's uh, six different levels. The first level starting out with beginner working their way up to the extreme advanced level of level six. Vertical challenge is taking place out at Timbercrest and it's our rock climbing program where vendors from Houghton College Wilderness Adventures will take the girls to Canada to do rock climbing. Under the sea is our scuba diving program, a two week program. The first week is out at Seven Hills where classroom and pool instruction the second week is followed by open water dive in Fort Erie, Canada. Upon successful completion of this program, girls will earn their certification in scuba diving. So if we look at a resident camp daily schedule, uh, this is a sample of what your girls will be participating in a typical day. It starts out with a polar bear swim for those who like to go for a swim first thing in the morning followed by flag, then breakfast. And then our morning time is, is uh, dedicated to uh, activities. So girls have an opportunity to choose the activities that they want to participate in. Now, if your girls have signed up for ropes course or a specialty program like horseback riding, the majority of their time will be spent in those activities. However, they still will have time to uh, choose different activities that they might want to dabble in, whether it's swimming, boating, arts and crafts, nature, they will still have an opportunity to do that. Lunch takes place at noon, followed by me time or rest time for an hour. Then we kick up our activities again for the afternoon, followed by dinner at 6, and then each evening uh, is different. It could be a camper's choice where there's anywhere from 15 to 20 different types of activities girls choose to an all-camp activity where the program director puts together a program based on the theme of the week and all girls and all camp staff participate in it uh, to Sunday being our opening campfire and Thursday being our closing campfire where we close out the week. And we make sure that we try to get our younger kids in bed by 8.30 where everybody's quiet by 9, uh, 9.30 at the very latest. With resident camp, we have a little bit more independence where girls travel with buddies from activity to activity. Now in our sleeping units, anywhere you'll see anywhere between four to six counselors in the sleeping units to help with coverage. So if we look at how to start packing for resident camp, one of the things that we strongly suggest to parents is because the space is so limited in our, in our sleeping tents, we ask that you please do not pack your daughter's belongings in a bulky suitcase or a sleeping trunk. What we highly recommend is a duffel bag because they're easy to compress and fit nice and easy under the beds. We also suggest for our younger campers that you pack your daughter's belongings in Ziploc bags. If you take a full day's clothing and you pack it in a Ziploc bag and label it, it makes it very easy for the girls to just pick out that bag for the day. Everything that they need will be in there. And just like day camp, 
please label, label, label everything uh, as we really do not want a lot of lost and found uh, at camp and we want to make sure that girls are taking home the right belongings. So if we look at what to pack again this is just a sample uh, listing, the full listing you will find available in the confirmation packet. Bathing suit, towel, and water shoes of course. Uh, from the pictures earlier you saw that there is a lake and or a pool for the girls to be swimming in every day. Uh, a jacket, sweatshirt, and rain gear. Again, uh, the weather, anytime it, you know, it's unpredictable. And it does get cool out at camp, so you want to make sure that, you know, your girls are staying warm. Insect repellent sunscreen, a heavy-duty water bottle. And just like day camp, we encourage hydration. Uh, we have different water stations throughout camp where uh, girls are constantly filling up their water bottles. Uh, resident camp girls will also need a mess kit just like day camp they'll be doing their outdoor cooking the girls are going to need a warm sleeping bag uh, at resident camp please do not pack a slumber bag uh, I know for a lot of girls the uh, Disney character sleeping bags are popular but they do not keep the girls warm uh, so you need a warm sleeping bag anything from 20 degrees or or more um, uh, are, as is ideal Okay, you want sturdy shoes, boots, and or sneakers, and we suggest if you could bring a um, a dirty pair of sneakers and a halfway decent pair of sneakers, so that we do a, uh, some puddle jumping and mud jumping out, out of camp. So if girls have one pair to wear and uh, to do those different types of activities, and then ones to wear uh, while um, walking around camp, we highly suggest that pajamas, of course, and uh, anything that would help um, ease their stay at camp a favorite stuffed toy is always uh, suggested and again label label please label everything so if your daughter is participating in the horse program these are some of the things that you want to make sure that she has uh, she's going to need loose fitting long pants uh, we do not recommend shorts they'll need to be wearing pants while participating in the horse program they will need a boot with a three-quarter inch heel. Work boots are fine. Hiking boots and sneakers are not um, simply because of the tread and there is no heel um, when um, looking at hiking boots or sneakers and the girls have a tendency to put their foot right through the stirrup. So with the three-quarter inch heel it helps to prevent from their uh, foot slipping through the stirrup. So you want to make sure that they have some type of a uh, good type of boot um, to wear uh, in the horse program. What not to pack, very similar to day camp, please do not pack any type of food, gum, candy, any type of smelling, uh, deodorant or uh, toothpaste. Um, it really attracts the animals and, and trust me, you do not want a skunk or a raccoon uh, rumbling around in your unit, especially in the middle of the night. Uh, so please, parents, please do not pack these type of things in your daughter's belongings. Anything of value, no iPod, MP3 players, cell phones, pocket knives, or permanent markers, please do not send them. Um, if we do find them, we do um, take them and send them home uh, with your daughter, either on Sunday or on at the end of the week. And again, like day camp, please do not pack your daughter's medication in her bag. You will need to hand that in on Sunday to the nurse, uh, and we'll be talking about that in just a few minutes. So this is an example of the sleeping accommodations on your, where your daughters will be staying. Uh, the top left hand corner of your screen is a platform tent unit and the bottom right hand corner of your screen is a permanent tent unit. Both Seven Hills and Timbercrest have these type of uh, facilities. And this is for girls in fourth grade and up will be sleeping in this type of unit. So these tent units sleep anywhere from four to five girls in a tent. And our counselors have slept separate sleeping tents uh, adjacent to the girls' tents. So this is for fourth grade and up. Where you'll see Jackman Bay Lodge, your bottom left-hand corner of your screen, and Bunkhouse, your top right corner corner of your screen. Those are the lodge facilities that we have at Seven Hills Goodyear and Timbercrest. These are for our younger girls in grades one to three. They'll be sleeping in lodges with staff supervision in the lodges with them. There are electricity in the lodges uh, where there is no electricity in the tent units. 
So again, this is a stepping stone to prepare the younger girls, grades one to three, uh, for camp, knowing that once they hit fourth grade, they will be in the platform tent units. So one of the things we also want to talk about for resident camp is how to prevent homesickness. These are just an example of some of the things that you'll see or what you can do uh, to prepare. The full list of items that were available in the camp confirmation packet. One of the things that we suggest is have your child practice being away from home prior to going to camp, whether that's staying at a friend's house or a relative's home uh, for a night and or weekend. Use a calendar at home to show your child that the time spent at camp is really not a long time at all, but a very sh short amount of time. Please uh, do not promise your daughter that she can call home while at camp. This has a tendency to really intensify the homesick situation. Um, if there is a situation going on, the staff will contact you the parent or guardian to let you know what is going on and together to come up with a plan that will help uh, your daughter stay be a positive one. And at any time you are concerned about what's going on with your daughter and how she's uh, faring at camp, please we encourage you to call and talk to the camp director and again they will work with you and um, let you know how things are going uh, with your child. So that's a little bit about our resident and day facilities. You know, we've talked about our programming at day camp. We've talked about our program at resident camp, uh, what schedules look like, how to pack, how to prepare, but we haven't really touched upon our staff. So our summer staff, you'll know it at all facilities, receive a criminal and sexual background check through the state um, and through federal. All of our staff must fill out a staff application along with references and all go through an interviewing process regardless of whether they are a return staff member or new. All of our staff, day and overnight staff, participate in a week-long training. During that training they receive uh, ages and stages of children and child development. They'll receive training in risk management, Girl Scout mission and goals, the journey program, our seasonal staff policies, they get trained in child abuse recognition and reporting, along with social media and the effects of social media. All will receive certification in first aid and CPR th for the professional rescue through the American Red Cross, along with certification and training in epinephrine auto-injector. They receive training in behavior management for children, bullying prevention, conflict resolution, emergency procedures, opening day procedures, and of course, camp songs. Now this is just a small snippet of all the actual training that does take place at camp. It is a quite intense week. Uh, this is just a sampling of some of the trainings that go on, uh, but it is a full seven day training uh, with a lot of team building and a lot of emphasis on, on getting prepared and ready to work with your children. So if we look at some additional information, is it easy to register? So if you haven't registered for camp, yes, it is easy. And there's two ways to do that. You can do a paper registration and either fax, mail, and mail that in, or you can register right online through our eBiz program. So when you visit our website and you click on the link camp, you'll see this little icon that says register here for summer camp. So if you click on that button, it takes you to our eBiz page. And to the left hand side you'll see the list of items and you want to click on the camp activities. That'll take you to our 2013 Girl Scout Summer Camp page. From there you'll be able to navigate your way through and pick out the camp that you want to send your daughter to along with the program that you're looking for. You simply click on the program and then automatically takes you to the camp registration form and you fill that registration form out. Once you complete the registration you'll receive an, uh, an email saying that you've successfully registered your daughter for the camp program. Financial assistance is available um, to all Girl Scout members including girls who signed up for Girl Scouts when registering for camp. So 
If you're not currently a registered Girl Scout or if your daughter's friend is not currently registered and they want to register for camp, they can. And then they become a Girl Scout. The great thing about it is once they become a Girl Scout, they're eligible for all the benefits of Girl Scouting and one of those benefits is financial aid. The application is available in the camp guide or on our website. You'll be able to download it. The unfortunate thing uh, uh, right now is you're not able to fill out the application through eBiz. So it does have to be a paper registration for financial aid. So you'll have to fill that out and send that in with the required 1040 tax forms um, and your $25 deposit for camp. Funding is also available through social services for day and or resident camps. So if you're receiving aid for dependent children, there's additional funding that is t that takes place through social services. Once you've registered, as I said, you'll receive a uh, receipt uh, indicating your successful registration for camp along with any balance that you have. There will also be a link to show you how to get to our camp confirmation packet. So we're going to show you here how to do that. You're going to click on the camp link as indicated above. And to the left hand corner of your screen you'll see halfway down camp confirmation packet. So you want to click on that link and that will take you right to the confirmation packets for day camp and resident camp. So depending on which camp your daughter is going to is the confirmation packet you are going to want to download. It is highly recommended strongly recommended that you please print out this confirmation packet. It is in a PDF and has all the information that you are going to need to prepare yourself and your daughter for camp. It'll have the full schedules, the full packing list, bus schedules, it'll have important phone numbers, directions to camp, maps to camp, it'll have when to drop your daughter off, when to pick your daughter up. There's be information on medication, there's going to be information on how to pack appropriately. So it's important that you read through everything. And if there's questions still, there's contact information in there on who to contact and who to call. One of the things you're going to find in the confirmation packet is new this year's information on Camp Doc. This is our new health form system. It is electronic and it also is going to include this year your daughter's camper pickup form. So no longer are you going to need to bring any forms to camp. Everything is going to be through the camp doc system. So again, once you register, you're going to receive an invoice indicating any balance and a link to the confirmation packet. You're also going to receive an email from Camp Doc saying that you've successfully registered. Please click on this link to create your daughter's account. You're going to create an account and a password. Once you've done that, you'll have a welcome. Your daughter successfully registered the camp name, the camp that your daughter's going to, and the program. And then you'll be able to start filling out your daughter's health form. You want to make sure you fill everything out completely. You will also have an opportunity to download your daughter's physical form and medication form. So you will take that to your daughter's doctor, have them fill that out, and then you are to scan and upload that back into your daughter's account. Now, if you have problems with scanning, please contact one of our offices and we'll be happy to assist you. We should be able to scan and upload those forms for you right into your daughter's account. So this account again is, is uh, confidential and it, it is an easy way to keep everything all in one location. So again, no need to bring any forms to camp. Everything now is through this camp doc system including as I said earlier your daughter's camper pickup form. So let's look at some additional questions that you might have. When is my camp payment due? Well, if you registered your daughter between February and June 5th, your final payment is due on June 5th. You can definitely register your daughter after that date. When you sign up for camp, 
register for camp, your full payment is due upon that time. Can you visit camp? Yes, we have open houses as all of our camp facilities. So July 2nd will be Lakeside Open House from 7 to 8.30. Windy Meadows will be Wednesday, July 3rd. Seven Hills Goodyear will be Wednesday, June 25th. And Timbercrest will be Sunday, June 23rd. Now Timbercrest and Seven Hills Goodyear will be offering a picnic and or Chevetta's Chicken Barbecue. And informa additional information is available in the camp catalog where you are able to purchase tickets uh, if you so like, uh, advance tickets up until June 19th, or you may purchase tickets at the door. Tours of the camps will be ongoing throughout the evening at all facilities. It's an opportunity for family and friends to come out and visit the staff, see where your daughter will be staying and activities she'll be participating in, and have your questions answered. Medication at camp. As we said, please do not pack your daughter's medication in her bag. You will need to hand that in to the nurse on uh, registration day. It must be in its original container with your daughter's name on it, whether it be prescribed and or over the counter. And it must be on your daughter's medical health form signed off by her doctor. If the doctor has not signed off on the, this for your daughter to take medication, our nurse cannot administer anything. So I highly suggest to parents, particularly those that are going to resident camp, if your daughter's not taking any prescription medication, it is still in your best interest to have the doctor sign off on over-the-counter medication. Because if she comes to the nurse with a headache or a stomach ache or anything of the sort, our nurse cannot treat her for anything unless your daughter's doctor has signed off and allowed permission to do so. So please make sure one, that your medication is not packed in your daughter's bag. Two, that it's in its original container with your daughter's name on it. And that goes per, per prescribed and over the counter. And that your doctor has signed off on all the medication. Again, no forms are needed at camp. Everything is going through Camp Doc. Will camp stores be available? Yes, we'll have stores available at resident camp where girls can put money on an account and they'll be able to go to the store every day. The store will be open on incoming and outgoing day for parents. And unfortunately, we're not going to be running stores at day camp this year, but parents can purchase day camp t-shirts and patches for their daughter uh, through the camp application form. If you did not indicate a t-shirt or a patch, you still can call the registrar and ask to order one. The t-shirts are $8 and the patches are $2. Can my daughter and her friend be in the same unit? Yes, they can. On the spot, there's an application. Does your daughter wish to be placed with the buddy? Please indicate the name of the child that your daughter wishes to be placed with. At day camp, they do every make every effort to make sure that those requests are made. For resident camp, if your daughter's friend and your daughter are signed up for the same program, they will be in the same unit together. However, we do not guarantee sleeping tents together. Those are on a first come first serve. So what we recommend for parents is they come together on registration day on Sunday and that gives them a better chance of getting a sleeping tent together. Okay. Can I attend family camp with my family? That's an excellent question and yes we do have programs available where families can attend camp. We offer two family camp weekends this year, Camp Timbercrest, which is a trail riding program. Again, the trail riding is optional, and that's Friday, July 12th to Sunday, July 14th. And Camp Seven Hills Goodyear is our ropes challenge course program, uh, Friday, August 2nd to Sunday, August 4th. The cost is $45 per person, and that includes all programming uh, and meals. Uh, it's a great opportunity to come out with your family and uh, participate as a family and experience our camp programs uh, for yourselves. Information and registration is available uh, in the camp catalog and on our website. And you're able to either do, again, paper registration or through uh, our online system through eBiz. So if you still need some contact information, 
indicated here, you'll see emails of our camp directors at all of our facilities uh, in this area, in the Buffalo area, and my contact information below. There's also contact information in your camp confirmation packet. So again, I highly suggest printing that out and highlighting those areas. Uh, we'll be happy to answer your questions via email or phone call. And that's it for the uh, Jamestown, Lockport, Buffalo parent orientation. We hope we've answered all your questions. Uh, again, if not, please feel free to contact us. We're available uh, to answer any of your calls and questions. We hope to see you all out at camp this summer.